Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We got one of our favorites back on the show. Kevin Sorbo is here. How are you, Kevin? Good to see you, buddy. Doing well. Doing well. We're in a big move right now. We just bought a house out here in Florida, and uh, we're moving everything in from our other house from California that we left two years ago. We've been yeah. renting it here for two years, and we found a spot, and we're, uh, we love where we're at. Now, when you move to uh, Florida, do you just get alligators? Do they give them to you when you get there? Or yeah. How does that work? We got, we got them in the backyard right yeah. now. Right? Nice. <laughs> nice. You get like a complimentary alligator in two years of free, uh, no property tax, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, there's no state tax there. Property tax is a little up there. Uh, it's not as bad as texas though i don't think yeah it's not as bad as texas is but i think that's yeah. where they get you you know if you go to a, a state uh tax free they're going to get you one way or another oh yeah yeah, yeah it's, I, it, I, mean, I don't mind not paying 13 and a half percent and california's going to 16.9 now is it really wow yeah man last time you were here we were chatting about the the mass exodus from california and you would call me a couple years ago because we i'd already made the move i i saw what was going to happen and you were like, hey, man, is it really? And I'm like, yeah, it's terrible. Just go. go. And the way the, the film industry is heading, um, especially for somebody like you, where it's like, dude, everybody knows who you are. Uh, you get calls to do movies and, and books and all that stuff. So you're fine and you can do it wherever you want now. Well, you know, the reality is we've been looking to move for well over five years now. Mm-hmm. We, just, we just sort of it was just weird that it took us that long to sort of get the punch here going. We've been out of the state for over two years now, but uh uh, you know, I've shot over 64 movies since my Andromeda series finished in 2005. And I, I would say like 85% of those were in Dallas, Texas, or further east. You know, Alabama, North, South Carolina, Florida, Louisiana, Georgia. Mm-hmm. And I look at my wife and what are we doing hanging out here? There's no mm-hmm. reason for us to deal with the traffic, the taxes, the crazy politics. I said, let's move. And she she wanted to move here anyway. We, we were looking at Dallas. We were looking at Nashville. But we settled out here to the side, the side of West Palm Beach. Nice. Yeah, we're we're all here in uh, Austin, Texas, yeah. which um, it's nice. <laughs> look, we live. I, I, I live outside the city. Before I know what the laughter's for. Before, <laughs> before you're your own little miniature California. I know. I know. Mm-hmm. I and mean, we tell the audience all the time: this state will be blue in like six years. Austin is already. Everybody, everybody said that twelve years ago. When when uh, actually longer than that. It was in the 2004 election when uh, uh, Bush v. Kerry. And everybody was like, oh, it's a purple state. It's going to be blue soon. No, it's not. You don't think so? No, I know. Well, here, no, it's here, not. The problem with that is, is you got all these people in California that vote the way they vote. Mm-hmm. And then they start living under the way they vote and go, this sucks. They moved to Georgia, uh, Nevada. They moved to Nashville. They moved to Texas. They moved mm-hmm. to Arizona. And look what they're doing in those states. So yeah. you guys almost, <laughs> that be- Bezos, Bezos, whatever that is, they be, almost, almost be Cruz. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, uh, Beto. Beto. Yeah. yeah, his real name is Robert. Beto, that's it. His real name is Robert. Uh, he's a white man that goes by a, an Hispanic nickname. Yeah, to, yeah. To, to, to relate, because he, he came up in uh, El Paso politics. Apparently, his au pair, uh, his rich ass family's au pair, was, uh, was Latina, uh, and she called him uh, Beto when he was a child. So he just like had his name legally changed that, I guess. Yeah. Like, why, yeah, yeah. why would a fucking goofy, uh, uh, goobery white man change his name to Beto? Why do you think that would be? Unless you're running for politics in Texas. Uh, hmm. Yeah, you're, you're, has, you're pandering. Yeah. What a he has piece of capitalist shit. guilt. That's what he's got. Capitalist guilt. Oh, yeah. It must be. <laughs> I mean, he didn't give up any of his money, though. So, you know what I mean? None of these people ever do that feel so bad about capitalism. They never surrender any of their, their wealth at all. They just, like, complain about everybody else. You know oh, I mean? All the time, like man. Like, millionaires complaining about billionaires. I'm like, all right, cool, dude. Let's just do this. Yeah. Hell it, yeah. It's like, dude, when I reach the... We always call it fuck you money on the show, Kevin. <laughs> mm-hmm. When I reach the fuck you money status, I'm just going to tell everybody how rich I am. That way I don't have to deal with everything else that goes on. Um, and then it's like, oh, hey, I, I'm not a... Uh, you know, eh, well, I'm not you know, that guy. It's, it's, it's interesting because uh, all these people that complain the most about uh, capitalism or whatever... The, one, the ones that are really wealthy, they can afford to be socialists because they don't live that lifestyle. Let's face it. They live, a, they live a capitalist lifestyle. Hollywood is a capitalist building. You don't think Universal and Paramount want to make money? Of course they do. Disney, yeah. they're, in, they're in it to just give their money away? No, of course they don't. It's, it's a business. That's well, what made America great. It was individual. Yeah. It wasn't big government. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna make it. They're, they're, they're actually making a huge mistake right now because of all the control that China has over the production companies and the theaters and all mm-hmm. that stuff right now. The more woke 
and out of touch these dumb dums get with the movies they create, the less they're going to do in the box office. You can't sell shit like that in China. They don't understand. Right. Like they understand that the uh, the Uyghurs are getting genocided by the Chinese government, right? Yeah. But you can't play that there because China would never allow it. All they want are action movies. That's it. Yep. They want action movies, preferably with a, a, a famous American actor, white or otherwise. Preferably white, probably, because that's what sells over there. Yeah. They want a white A-list actor to do a, a film set in Asia somewhere. That's what they want. An action film. That's all. They, they want Brad Pitt to fight King Kong and shit. That's it. That's it. That's like, it. Like, for real. It's, 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 it is what it is. I mean, it's capitalism, ultimately. And they're not adjusting very well to it. I don't know what they think is going to happen. They're going to siphon off this, this small majority, 15, 20% of the woke community in America, and that's just going to be their audience. They're going reverse. So it used to be where in Hollywood, if you were not progressive, but classically liberal, people by and large would like you as long as you weren't an asshole, right? Right. And then there were some fringe people on either side that had their small little audiences, almost like the far right people that have their small little audiences in social media and things like that mm-hmm. or on, on, on uh, television. And now uh, it's flip-flopping. Like, people just want to be, they, they're tired of being talked to like they're children. They really are. It's, like, so demeaning and, and, and irritating to be t- spoken to like that. Like, oh, did you know about this? Shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah. Can even, I eat my hamburger? I know. Please? Even in last night's Super Bowl, you know, I'm sure you watched the game. How many woke oh, commercials God. were there last night during yeah. that thing? It, it, it just got so ridiculous. It's, I said, you know. Isn't it wonderful now that in, in sports it all has to be political as well? I mean, you look at LeBron James has done. I mean, I think a number of people, including myself, don't watch the NBA anymore. It gets ridiculous. Mm. Not, you know, I always like to post for fun, say we need more diversity in the NBA and NFL. You know, <laughs> 80%, 80% black. And then people attack me going, you want the best athletes. I go, that's my point, you idiots. Yeah. If, I have, if I have a business, I'm, I'm for hiring. I don't care what sex they are or what – color they are if they're the best for the job that's why i want to hire right exactly you get attacked for that kind of stuff but the sports is a perfect place to look for it because you want the best athletes and let's face it the black population as a whole are better athletes than white population and it shows in in, mm. in track basketball football and and you know i mean there was an old joke i remember when tiger woods first came out what do you call what do you call 149 white men chasing one black guy <laughs> The PGA Tour. Yeah. <laughs> the Tiger just dominated it. I mean, I'm a fan. I mean, I, I appreciate people being great at what they do. Yeah, man. Like, yeah. We're, 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 we're by and large giving ourselves a, a worse and worse experience in life by not admitting some very simple truths. Yeah. yeah. It's very stupid to do, isn't it? It's like, it's like, how, it's like just being, I mean, just being an American right now and complaining about America is. You look, there's plenty of stuff that we can work on and fix, absolutely, and we should be doing that. But to th- this idea that we need to tear down the patriarchy and, and defund police and get rid of capital, like, come on, man, really? You yeah. live in the best time in human history and the best country in human history. You know what I mean? By, by best, I mean wealthy uh, access to, to water, food, uh, uh, medicine, et cetera. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's safe and it's socially progressive in a good way. Like, it gets out of hand sometimes, but we do – we do think about other people a lot here. Like it it goes, people get trapped in their day-to-day life a lot. And I understand how that happens. It happens to everybody, but very frequently America looks inward on itself and, and asks the question, are we doing this right or not? Right. And we have a big national discussion about it. And then we change things as necessary. That's happened quite a few times. We haven't made nearly enough progress. Politicians have taken it upon themselves to steal that plight, to co-opt it for their own, like personal gain and power and shit mm-hmm. like that. But that process is still there. It happens here. This is the best place to live. And we complain yeah. about it constantly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even last night, like, you know, speaking of, of complaining and everything and, and during the, the commercials and all that stuff, like with Springsteen and all those guys, like, you know, that, that was the backlash last night with Jeep. Um, now, you know, America can heal again because their guys won. Uh, my comment online was like, where was this in 2016? Because we, you know, before Trump got elected, we had riots that year and, and uh, you know, Ferguson and all, everything else. Nobody was calling for healing and unity in 2016, but now they are now. When you were watching this last night as a fan, because I know you're a gigantic sports fan, like, at, at what point are you just like, man, can we just get back to the game? And, I, you know, the commercials used to be fun. I know. I just put it on mute. I got tired of listening to it. I said, this is ridiculous. They constantly beat this down on us and just tell us how bad we are and tell us how we got to do this kumbaya thing, you know, and all get together. We're all getting together. 
you, you guys mentioned already, you know, this this is a country that gives so much to people mm. to help other people. We're a very giving country. We don't see people, uh, you know, nobody's taking boats from Key West to Cuba. There's a reason for that. Nobody's <laughs> the Mexican border to get into Mexico. You know, not to bash Mexico. I've, I've been there many, many times. But obviously they have their problems. Otherwise, we wouldn't have so many Mexicans rushing the border to get mm. to America. And, um you know, it just it just drove me crazy. I just I just muted it. I said I just want to watch football. That's all I want to watch. Yeah. Even before that, the stuff they had to go on about not about not about and saying we still haven't come far enough. And I go, man, you know, it's just what do we got to do? I got I got to feel guilty because I was I was born white and I'm the fourth of five kids. My dad was a school teacher. All I remember is my dad biting his fingernails at the end of every month trying to figure out where the last three dollars go. Mm. You know, I started a paper out when I was nine years old. We didn't have money. My clothes were hand me downs my older brother. So, but I one thing I had in my family were parents that that were, were believers in God, believers in hard work, and believers that you know you don't wait for handouts. I'm nine, nine years old for seven years. I do a paper out in Minnesota, Monday, <laughs> Saturday, getting up at four thirty in the morning in thirty below wind chill weather. What they have there right now, and I'd be out there doing that stuff because my dad taught me hard work. Because you appreciate when you get stuff. When I bought my first car with my own money, I'll tell you, you take care of it. You know, and yeah. we're, we're just lost that in this country well that's the thing it's i I say it all the time yeah i say it all the time the only color that matters in this country is green uh economic equality is the most important thing that we could ever do for any struggling i mean i christopher hitchens said this 20 years ago maybe 30 i don't remember how long ago it was 25 uh that the the only thing that will bring uh a struggling second world or third world country into the first world is the economic empowerment of women because you cannot hamstring 51 percent of your population and expect everybody to succeed so yeah. things are only just if it's just for every single person in this country like everybody has to have the same shot right now they don't frankly black people don't have the same shot in a lot of ways because you you actually explain it a lot this crime bill bullshit that put three million black men in jail i would say a, a great deal of them had th- children right yeah. that didn't fucking know them yeah. or they they grew up in a culture that uh uh that's just how it is. So you, you do what you got to do to get by. You might go to jail, right? That's yep. unacceptable for us to have allowed that to happen. And it's on everybody that it happened. It's on their community for not stepping up. It's on us for not fucking admitting the problem and fixing it. And it's mostly on Democrats, frankly, for keeping a little carrot out in front of them that looks yeah. like looks like upward mobility, but it's not yeah. for 40 fucking years, yeah. right? Somebody's got to pay a price for this at some point. It's not going to be Joe Biden, apparently, because he's a goddamn president now. Yes. You know what I mean? Speaking of like, which. He got elected after all that. He got elected. That's in, it's incredible to me. Speaking of which, you know, we the last time you were on was uh, right before the election. Um, what were your thoughts uh, of, of Biden getting in? Were you shocked or not? Um, yeah, I was shocked. But, I mean, you know, I, I don't have all the answers to this. I mean, it, it certainly looks like there's something interesting going on with the voting process that all these swing states shut down at the right time. In the same time, and all of a sudden, all these votes came in to every single one of them for Biden. Um, do I think there was some voter fraud? I think this voter fraud has been around for 50, 60 years. Mm. I mean, I, I remember growing up and starting studying history that there was voter fraud when uh, Kennedy beat Nixon back in 1960. That was like the close, I think there was only, what, 600 votes? I mean, it was such a, a small percentage of votes that separated the two. I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at what I'm reading, but... Um, for a guy like that, who never came out of his basement, and anytime he did, there was only six people who showed up mm-hmm. to get 15 million more votes than Obama got. Obama was a rock star, mm, just yeah. like Trump was a rock star. Those guys would go out, 20,000, 30,000 people would show up. And I, I just keep, in my mind, I keep thinking, Joe, just don't talk. Stay in your, stay in your basement. We got this covered, you know? So, um, and you look at his running mate, Harris. I mean, I've heard all kinds of stuff about her through the de- through the decades being out in California. Yep. And you kind of go, okay, here's a woman that ran in the Democratic primary. Uh, she was one of, I don't know, they had 15 people when it started out. She was the first to go. Yeah. 90% of Democrats <laughs> didn't want her as president. And yet he picks her as his running mate. So I was kind of surprised with that choice. But, you know, we, we have what we have right now, and we can just, uh, we can just hope for the best. But it's, it's crazy time right now in, in, in Washington, D.C. Yeah, it was, uh, for me, you know, I refuse to entertain, like, the, the voter fraud and all that other stuff. Um, just because it's, it just seems, 
I don't know, kind of implausible. We didn't really get a lot of evidence on it. Uh, the only thing that kind of opened up my eyes to it was this, truthfully, this Robin Hood thing that was going on with GameStop and uh, you, AM, or, uh, AMC, where if it was that easy to just shut off the stock market, would yeah. it be that easy with uh, voting and everything else? And then I, then I was like, eh, maybe. But, you know, this is one of those things where I don't think we'll ever have answers. Well, I'll tell you until this. Until a documentary comes out in like 20 or 30 years I'll tell or you something this. like that. Since... From the time I joined the Army in 2005, my personally identifiable information, and in one instance, including my DNA and fingerprints, mm -hmm. have been stolen through computer security issues from the government, from the U.S. Army, and then from the uh, VA, department, uh, VA, and then from Homeland Security. How many right. times? Three times. All of my shit's been stolen. One, the, one, the second time, uh, or the, yeah, the second time it was uh, the DOD, and it included like all my records, which is like my SF-86, which is the paperwork you fought for your security clearance, mm -hmm. every piece of information about my entire life ever, right? Including my fingerprints and my DNA. Do they give you an answer <clears throat> of like who did this or here's what we think? Uh, no, they just, uh, they, little pat on the back. Yep. And uh, oh, sorry, you get a letter. Like a, a single page <laughs> letter in the mail. Like, hey, we just want to let you know. And then by the way, if you need uh, uh, identity security you can go to this website and use this link for a free year I'm like oh thanks guy. Oh, hey. Hey, so i don't know that. i don't know if it was like uh one of those companies mm -hmm. that hacked the government and then it's like a pyramid scheme or some shit like that i don't know uh. uh but no i didn't get anything from them except for fuck so if i ever get charged with murder i'm gonna subpoena the chinese government you should yeah they've and got, and have they've got my dna testify. <laughs> they've got my dna and my fingerprints so <laughs> fuck them right? exactly um speaking of documentaries you're you're working on one right now tell everybody the name of it um, I, it's, it's not what I know, I see. It's, it's called Against the Tide. It's um, very interesting. You, you brought up Hitchens' name. Yep. Um, a famous atheist. Um, mm -hmm. This uh, John Lennox, he's an apologist. I did a documentary on his life. Spent three weeks in Oxford, England, where he's from. He's a retired math professor at Oxford University. We shot three weeks there, two weeks in, in uh, Israel. And it was all about, it's called Against the Tide, Proving God in a World of Science. And it was mm. pretty fascinating. I, I played the antagonist in a way. I'm the one who asked the questions like an atheist or agnostic would ask. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he's just a brilliant guy. And yeah, he, he is. He, you know who he is, John Lennox? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I follow him. There's a, there's a lot of, uh, people would be surprised by how many super devout uh, religious folks are in positions of power when it comes to uh, uh, math and science. He's one of them. Uh, Francis yeah. Collins, the guy that ran the Human Genome Project, mm -hmm. is one of them. I mean, it's not like pe people have this idea that uh, science and religion are diametrically opposed. And I guess in some ways, religion makes empirical claims about the universe that cannot be proven one way or another, which is you know problematic for scientists. But uh, uh, that doesn't it, they're not mutually exclusive all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it doesn't work. That's not how life works. I just I don't know why people get so bent. I love those conversations between yeah. like Hitchens and Sam Harris and Dawkins and and uh, uh, who's the other one? Uh, uh, Singer, Singer's uh, another Singer, one. yeah, Dan Dennett, and then all the. You know, it, 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 I hope people check it out. They can go right now and order it. They can mm. streaming or the DVD. It's it's called Against the Tide Movie. Gives you all the information right there, and it's pretty fascinating. We did a Fathom event, but right in the middle of COVID, you know, it's really hard to get anybody to go to movie theaters over the last twelve months, but. Right. Uh, We'll see what happens with it. It's it's a very good documentary. They did a great job with it. Um, I'm I'm on camera. I narrate as well. But uh, the the team behind the production team behind it did a fantastic job. And I got to throw out that I have the number one do um, uh, documentary right now on Amazon. And I may have talked about this last time, but it's it's called Before the Wrath. And uh, I narrate this one as well. BeforetheWrath.com. It's a very educational look at the book Revelation. You don't have to be a Christian. You don't mm -hmm. have to just. If you like, I like documentaries, and I'll watch a lot of different documentaries mm -hmm. on different genres and different <laughs> subjects. I find them fascinating. So, do you talk I, at all in that one about how uh, uh, John was was uh, on an island, and that island was known for having uh, psychedelic mushrooms? Oh my gosh! You read the book Revelation. You're <laughs> what's going yeah. on? But that that doesn't come up in it. But mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not. Uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing. I remember as a kid reading that. I thought it was like the scariest book I've ever read in my life. But uh, I think people find it interesting. I think they can form their own opinion about it. But I that's why I like documentaries. I, I think what you just said. I like both sides of the issue. Mm -hmm. I love hearing the debates without people getting all mad and angry and wanting to yeah. kill you. Over it. Yeah, yeah. Those are those are great conversations because I mean, I my 
my first tenure in college was uh, for a degree in comparative religion. I've always found it fascinating because uh -huh. there's no there's no better way to study human beings than to study this process of how we've tried to figure out what our place and purpose in the world is, right? That's the most, that's the best thing you can ever read. Religious books are the best thing in the history around it, are the best things you could ever read to understand how human beings think. Mm -hmm. I love that stuff. Yeah, and we just had Brian Keating on uh, yesterday, um, yeah. who lost the Nobel Prize, and he was, uh, he was talking about that as well. Yeah, yeah. And, he's uh, a, the he's constant a, quest to find, uh, yeah, you yeah. Know. He's a devout uh, Jewish man. So, but he was atheist earlier in his life. I think he was raised Catholic uh, because of his stepfather or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And then, you know, became atheist for a while and then kind of got back into Judaism, which, you know, that's cultural almost more than it is a belief system sure. at that point. But still, you know, people like the idea of uh, <clears throat> the general principle that we look at from the Bible that we see everywhere else is the golden rule. But there's other principles from the Bible that we see everywhere else in every other religion and not just in religion and in, in society at large, which is it is important to understand that there's something above you. It's why Jews wear yarmulkes, right? Mm -hmm. It's a reminder that God's always over you, right? And while I don't agree with that, I do like the idea that there's, there's got to be something more important than me, than the self. The Curse of the Self is a great book, by the way, if you want to read that. Sometimes it talks about how once we discovered that we were autonomous, like, human beings, like, what the fuck does that mean? Right. Like, imagine you're a computer and all of a sudden you become self-aware. You understand that you're a computer. What would, what would go through your mind? at that point. Uh, it would it would explode and yeah. melt to the ground. Yeah. Um, and you were one of the, the guys who was on the forefront of uh, these faith-based movies. Um, you know, shit, I remember hanging out with you uh, in 2011 in Cannes, and you were doing Soul Surfer. You guys were doing press for Soul Surfer out there. Um, I, was there Bethany, I was there with Bethany Hamilton, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You, you, uh, you introduced me to her, and um, a, unbelievable story, uh, still one of the biggest movies there was, and, and you know, as far as faith-based movies, um, and it was incredible. But you were one of the first guys um, to to say, "Hey, man, I want to tell these stories and get these stories made in Hollywood." What made you want to do that? Because you've been unbelievably successful, especially in that genre. And people, you know, some people still think Hercules and Andromeda, but it's like, man, you've had a, a, an a amazing career of a wide array of projects. Well, I mean, look, I think Pool Boy, obviously. Pool Boy, FDR American I mean, Badass, all that on. stuff. Like, I, you're not afraid to do anything. What what made you? I got Ju Julia X had played a serial killer. So yeah, I, like, I mixed it up a little bit. But, um, you know, it started with it started with What If. What If was a movie that uh, Dallas Jenkins gave me. Dallas, a good friend of mine, is... He's the son of Jerry Jenkins, who did Left Behind books. And uh, he gave me a script to read. He said, it wasn't like, do you want to roll? He said, what do you think of the script? I read and I said, this is awesome. Who's playing Pastor Ben? He said, listen to other guys. And I said, no, no, I'm playing. He goes, dude, I can't afford you. This is such a low-budget movie. He said, I don't care. I want to do this. Well, that script was written by the same guys who four years later I did a movie with called God's Not Dead. Yeah. And God's Not Dead is the most successful dollar-for-dollar -dollar return on any I mean, as well as the passion, as well as this is a $2 million budget that made $140 million. That's a 70 times return. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, it, that really kind of kicked it off for me. It didn't necessarily have to be faith-based movies. I just wanted to do more movies that had more of a family-friendly feel to them. Movies that make you think, make you laugh, make you cry, talk, talk, whatever it may be, relate to the character on the screen. I just got tired of, there's so much anger and hate coming out of Hollywood. Every movie, mm -hmm. every movie really violent and I'm not a wuss about that kind of stuff but I said you know I, I, I don't want my eight-year-old kids seeing this stuff and even the, even the networks with their regular tv hours now so that sort of was the road for me that I wanted to do I have the Sorbo family film studios we started a couple of years ago and I do want to throw out that I am doing the next left behind movie we just got funded for that we're probably filming it either in Georgia or Alabama mm -hmm. and uh, I just met with Dan Cathy we golf together a couple of times now the Chick-fil-a CEO so I'm, I'm bugging him for future projects, you know, because he's worth a few dollars as well. Yeah, so. he's got a couple shekels on him. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, but I, I remember, uh, like, what if, um, I remember you served me correct. I think it was $7.8 in the box office, which, you know, it, it kind of came out of nowhere to Hollywood, at least, and they were shocked. Yeah. And I re remember reading all the articles in, like, Variety and Hollywood Reporter and everything, and they were like, what? Yeah. What are these movies? How, how can they possibly be doing well? Um, God's Not <clears throat> Dead, which you mentioned earlier, man, I believe it's on, what, sequel three or four at this point? They did. They did two and three. Two and three. Um, two and three, yeah. And um, But uh, they've done, you know, I've done a few other things with Netflix. They're actually, they actually sold their streaming service to um, 
Sony affirmed Rich Peluso's company now. So they're handling the streaming part of uh, their Pure Flix streaming. But, mm. um, uh, you know, I've got a number, like I said, really good. i got a couple of great Westerns. The trouble with Westerns, they don't play overseas anymore. They right, play well yeah. in Canada. They play well in Australia. But other than that, Hollywood doesn't really want to touch them. I know they got a big one out now with Tom Hanks. Mm. Um, News of the World or something like mm. that. Yep. Yep. And I just, saw the, I just saw the movie. I get sent all the screeners because I'm on the voting board with the Oscars. Pretty darn good movie. It's pretty you, interesting because I love Westerns. I guess yeah, yeah. I myself. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the last great Western, I, I guess, was probably The Hateful Eight, right? And it was Tarantino, which is weird that that to say that. But yeah. I, I remember the. I guess uh, that I loved it, but it box office wise, like yeah, Kevin was talking. Sucked. Yeah, Kevin was talking. Even about it. it didn't do well. It didn't do well overseas. That series, that mini series, Godless. Did you watch that with Jeff Bridges? Yes, amazing. Nobody watched that shit. I guess Yellowstone. Everybody's watching. That's that's not really a western though. It's just set in the west. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, it feels like a western. But I guess uh, like who I was gonna ask because I'm trying to think of the westerns historically. It may have done well overseas. Like that stupid one with Daniel Craig where he's of a space cowboy or some oh, bullshit uh, like that. Yeah, yeah, Cowboys versus Aliens. Maybe something like I gotta, that. I got to let you know, that was my writers from Hercules that did that one. I mean, it was, <laughs> that movie, that movie is exactly what they would love in the Chinese box office. They'd love shit like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know, there's, well, I'll, I'll tell you, back so, in the day, I'll tell you, so True Grit was one when I was, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when I was there where I can't with that. I, 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 the I, original I, True Grit is good. I, I agree. But I remember when they were putting that together, mm. they were like, li- literally, they were like, the only way to get people to watch a Western overseas was to stack that full of like huge A-list stars. Um, and mm. even then it did pretty well. Like it, it broke a hundred here domestically. But I'm not sure that it made the money back overseas that they were hoping for. Because I'm with you. I love Westerns. Um, I, got, I got a Western I did called Avenging Angel. I did, I did with Hallmark. And it was their highest rated Western they've ever done. They don't make Westerns anymore. But they did at least one a year for like 20 years. And they it did so well when they actually put it out on BBD. So if you want to see it's I think it's a pretty good Western called Avenging Angel. It's a, I play a pastor turned bounty hunter after my wife and child are killed by some bad guy. Mm, that's awesome. That's yeah, I, I've I've tried to make a couple, and we any, always get met with budget resistance. Any kind of period well, the stuff horses, is so yeah. expensive. The and period horses, stuff, yeah. and then the horses, because then you got to get the trainers and you got to get the horses out there and everything. And it's uh, that budget goes up real quick on a western. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but I, I'd love to see you on Yellowstone. I think you'd be mm-hmm. rad on that show. I got a hold of him about a year and a half ago. I said, dude. Because I, I, I didn't have a place up there in Deer Valley, and they mm-hmm. shoot in Park City, Utah. I said, yeah. come on. <laughs> you don't have to put me in a hotel. I can stay at my, my condo up there. <laughs> just, just start showing up in costume. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're Kevin Sorbo. People are going to be like, oh, shit, is Kevin Sorbo on this? Yeah. You know, this, they'll hand you a script probably, they, right? They'd be amped about yeah. it, I, I think. fans out there, but, you know, they, it's, <laughs> I know I've turned a few away just by being posting things like the truth. People mm-hmm. don't like the truth anymore on Twitter or Facebook. <laughs> They're doing a very good job of taking about 10000 away from me every week right now, both mm. of those data sites. Yeah, I, I saw you on Twitter. You were trending two days ago. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, when I saw your name, number four, I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> and trending topics. And actually, it was a hilarious tweet about Hunter Biden. Um, yeah. That went crazy viral. Wait, which and, one was it? Um, it was the uh, the crack, crack lap. Uh, laptop up, up, and then you were it, it was hilarious and you were like oh yeah it's the thing it's the thing <laughs> <laughs> and you go yeah it's the thing um it was a really funny tweet kind of uh you know just a, an innocent joke but people uh, you know people get all self-righteous and they get all crazy but you know 95 percent of people love what i do i get stopped through airports and hotel lobbies and people say hey we know that the, the left is attacking you, but we're still on your side. Mm. And I just look at this whole thing with about getting, you know, cancel culture. I go, guys, what's the big deal? I, yeah. I, I, there's so much vile stuff that says that comes back to me. And all I say is I make a joke, and, and there's truth to the joke. But you can't even do that in today's world. I mean, it, it's I, I look at these people that go after anybody right now because they've led such perfect lives, haven't yeah, they? Right. they anything wrong or anything in their entire lives that they're embarrassed about so they need to write a book so you and i can all learn how to be as perfect as they are yeah exactly right i think uh uh maybe there's some sayings about that like glass houses and shit yeah 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 uh, yeah man it, it's it the left is going to pay for this at some point and not in the way that you're going to think i mean they're, they'll just 
it'll, it'll become so intersectional that they just start canceling each other. You know what I mean? It's so stupid. It's like, already it, started. Yeah, it, it is. It is already starting. Yeah, I mean, it's... They are, the, they are the gift that keeps giving. A lot of stuff they do and say uh, that they blame the right on are stuff they're already guilty on. They're very smart yeah. with their, their, yeah. their deflection. They're well, very smart with that. But people are catching on to it and getting tired yeah, of it. Yeah, Freud called that uh, self-projection through accusation. That was a phrase he used. Yeah. Uh, uh, so... You know, you if you're on the left or you're on the right and somebody from your side is trying to cancel somebody else out for a mistake they made or something maybe they said or a belief that they had, you know, you have to give people the opportunity to change, first of all. And secondly, if you uh, allow if you allow your side to keep canceling people like that, then you're the fucking pro- you're the quicksand. Yeah. You are the quicksand that we're all falling into. If you understand what's happening, you're not doing something and speaking out about it. You're a fucking asshole. You got to stop that shit. You have to police your own house up first. Don't don't look to the other side. And try to blame people. Look at your side and fix what's wrong first. Mm-hmm. Do that first. Then we can do this all, all this other stuff. Yeah, well, you, you can cue Michael Jackson, the man in the mirror right now, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, except that's for... Where, that's where it starts. A lot of these people, I swear to God, if I'm going to do a psychological profile on them, these are people that are filled with so much hate and anger towards themselves and misery loves company. They want to drag everybody right down with them because they don't like who they are. They don't like their jobs if they have one. They don't like their relationships if they have one. These are miserable little trolls that probably still live in the basement of their mom and dad and they're 42 years old, mm-hmm. but they have nothing but anger in their lives. It's, it's, it's really quite sad. Yeah, and it, that, I mean, that dumb dumb that dressed like a Viking at the Capitol is basically, he's the neck beard that we all think about when we think about some loser living in your mom's basement. Yeah, right. but they're going to parade that guy around. And oh yeah, he's he's forever. the the left is going to try to make him the quintessential Republican. Yeah, like oh that's his Republicans are all wearing hats, man. Look at him. Like, yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm I'm well, I'm not a Republican, but I'm like just sitting in my house, dude. <laughs> fuck you. Talking? I had bacon and eggs for break, breakfast this morning. Exactly. I haven't seen my mom in like ten years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shame on you. No, I, Dan, yeah, Dan, uh, uh, not a sweet childhood, I think. Right? Yeah. No. Um, I want to ask you about uh, Trump because you're you're involved in social media a lot here. He got taken down off of, you know, obviously every platform there is. Um, There was a report this morning that Parler had offered Trump 40 percent of the company. If he would just go there and and speak exclusively, that could be his new form of Twitter. Um, Do you think there is going to be an app or an avenue for him in the future? Well, I'll tell you what I like right now, and I've moved over to do more, is kind of Clout Hub. You guys heard of Clout Hub? No. Check it out. Clout Hub. C-L-O-U-T-H-U-B. Um, they just gained, I think, another 2 million followers this past weekend as well, and they're growing really fast, and I'm, I'm in there with them. Um, I like what they got going on. I like what they're doing. Um, if you just go and check it out and see, you know, read about what they're doing in that app, it's pretty, it's pretty smart, and um, they're not – they're not going to be as crazy as what they're doing at Twitter and Facebook and trying to, you know, censor opposing views. You know, you only have to have one view. You know, it's, it's interesting. We used to have freedom of speech, but freedom of speech and tolerance is all a one way street now. Yeah. And uh, well, you, know, you, guys, you guys mentioned earlier, I mean, we are now all guilty until proven innocent, mm-hmm. which used to be the other way around. You don't get a second chance. And look what they did to Kavanaugh. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, man, 40 years ago, you hit on a girl in college. Well, who didn't hit on a girl in college? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can make up what you want on that and say, call it rape. There's no proof of that. Um, but, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just sad to see what's going on in our country without what you mentioned earlier. And glass houses is definitely what it is. And the Bible verse is look at the log in your own eye instead of yeah. the speck in your brain. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it, it is basically sociological confirmation bias. We need these people that are opposed to us politically to be evil. So we go looking for evidence to find that. If I wanted to prove that... Let's just say we were having a, a scientific debate about something. Like, I want to prove what kind of wood this is. I just go look for different types of... Well, I mean, according to the internet, this wood grain is probably, probably is this. We're just going to say it's this, right? That's not how that works. You look at the wood grain, then you go look... You, you, you collect the evidence, then you process the evidence and find out what's true. That's how that process is supposed to work, yeah. right? So what we're doing now is sociological confirmation bias. The left has to be bad. This Democrat that voted for Biden... <laughs> or Obama, or, or whom, Hillary Clinton, or whomever it is. I don't like that they did that, so they have to be a bad person. Now, let me go find reasons why they're bad. These people that voted for Trump, they must be crazy because he says crazy shit. They must, it, it isn't about any of his policy. It, it is very nuanced to say, you know what, they probably don't like him as a person either because he's kind of a dick, but they 
like the policies and that's what they're voting for is a policy right. person and not a personality, right? Yeah. It's easy to it's e- really easy to arrive at a normal human being conclusion right there, but we we persist in not doing that for some reason and I don't understand why. I don't either. Um, have you played uh, golf with Trump down in Florida? Uh, I played with him, gosh, about 16 years ago at the Lake mm-hmm. Tahoe Golf Tournament. Um, that's when he was doing his first season on, um, uh, the, what is he, Apprentice Show? Yep. And um, it was interesting uh, three days with him. So I played with him and uh, Jesse Ventura. So it was, it was fun conversation. Wow. Really? Does he have an ego? Yeah. But, you know, Obama had an ego. I got a little bit of an ego. I mean, you have to have some kind of ego about yourself to have some kind of positive things happen in your life. Right. Uh, and I agree with what you just said, too. That what A lot of people didn't like Trump just because they didn't like his personality. And I get it. But as for what he did for the policies, he did some pretty good stuff. And he was actually doing stuff he said he was going to do. So, you know, but it's it's we, we can't separate those things anymore from people. They just got to go after the one thing. They go, it's like a personality contest now. But uh uh, no, I haven't. I haven't seen him since last time. So I haven't seen him in person since two thousand four. Yeah. W- it's funny you say that. I was listening to one of uh, Douglas Murray's books uh, the other day, and he was talking about intersectionality and how we're on this. We're basically in a in a in a runaway greenhouse effect almost of intersectionality, where we've decided as a culture that we're going to break every individual down into every characteristic they have, mm-hmm. and then through time and, 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 and arguments and complaints and, and, and accusations, we're going to arrive at some kind of hierarchy about who should be the most offended by what, like who's, who's been most agreed, agreed longest they're up here and then so on and so forth. And that is how life is now. Right. So instead of sharing culture with each other and growing together and becoming more alike and thinking more alike, we're going to highlight and not only highlight, but live only about our differences. That is the dumbest shit that you could ever do. That's like going to marriage counseling and just say, all right, you guys just complain about each other for an hour and go home. Right. And do that for 20 years. And it'll work. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's fucking stupid, man. It doesn't make any sense. It, it, when you say these things out loud, when you describe what's happening, people are like, oh, that's really stupid. I'm like, yeah, and you're doing it right now, you stupid fuck. Yeah. Like, just stop. Jesus Christ, man! It's, it, I'm I'm losing it. Yeah, yeah, I'm losing it today. I'm gonna fucking flip this table over. <laughs> you know, you get to the point where these masks, all these different rules and regulations on masks, it just oh yeah. Just, my mind watching the football game last night, and the players all got masks on. And the officials who were 20 yards away wearing a mask. Yeah. You're going what? And just, I get on an airplane, I gotta wear a mask, even though there's a person. A foot and a half in front of me, next to me, here, there's there's a dozen people less than six feet away. But when we get off the airplane, please only one row at a time and keep six feet of separation. Mm. It's so ridiculous. It is so it's stupid. Mandate. Yeah, it's it's like, uh, I'll tell you, people, the one thing that, that every human, most people share is that they will not tolerate inauthenticity, right? They can't, it, you can, even you, as much as you try to hide it, they will sniff it out at some point, and it like Kamala, Kamala Harris, right? Yeah. Everybody hates her. No one likes her. I all of my friends on the left are like, "This woman is a piece of shit." Yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, she is." <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, they they could smell it, right? They can smell the inauthenticity, and uh, they know that it's bullshit. So when people when we see leaders tell, like, I think I, it's not that I think I know for a fact that the mask will stop water from going out of your face and spreading a virus to somebody else that's how the fuck it works right absolutely anything you put on in front of your face is going to help with that issue two ma- like come on man two when, mask is now trending today and right then, now on then, twitter yeah and then seeing people not wear them when they're supposed to the people that are telling us to wear them seeing them going out to these restaurants and doing all this stuff like if you're not taking it seriously nobody else is either don't blame it on trump gavin newsom yeah like these motherfuckers want to blame trump because he didn't take masks seriously and that there a lot of people say that's why he lost the election because he Older, older white Republican voters were like, fuck this guy. He's not taking it seriously, and my friends are dying, right? And that's a, that's a reasonable thing for them to say and vote their conscience on, for sure. Mm-hmm. But, but nobody was taking it seriously, right? Like, the, these, these, the, the leadership of your party, Kamala Harris, the governor of the biggest state in the country, and, and uh, Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, None of them took it seriously, and we're expected to, right? Right. I mean, come on, man. People, that inauthentic bullshit, no one will buy it. And that's why th- th- there's this trope that, that conservatives, 
oh, they're anti. They don't believe in masks, man. They're anti-science. No, they believe in what they see, right? When they see somebody, when they hear somebody tell them something, and then they see them doing the opposite, they believe what they see. The end, right? Yeah. So get fucked. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. And, and to me, you know what it reminds me of is uh, when there used to be smoking inside restaurants, and there was a smoking section, oh, yeah. a non-smoking section. <laughs> it was like, man, I'm there's still smoke all there throughout used to be, the restaurant. There used to be like, smoking sections on planes, dude. You can only smoke in the back of the plane. It's a tube, <laughs> bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. fuck. Um, that's what it, that's what it feels like to me. So when I go into these places, because you know, and they're bitching, you know, today obviously about the Super Bowl of everybody partying last night in Tampa Bay and all that other stuff, and it's like, you're not going to stop it. And then you also didn't bitch about it over the summer when you know cities were burning down and nobody was wearing a mask protesting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. The COVID COVID only does if you're rioting, it doesn't hang out that way. You look, when you got walk in a restaurant, you got a mask on. You sit down, you can take it off. And I go, what, does it only hang up here? It's not, it's not at seated level? Yeah. So, I don't, this, it's the, what you said, the inconsistency of it. They, they, they just watching people do say one thing and then they actually yeah. do another. It's that thing, do as I say, but not as I do. And that's what they're doing right now. Governments loves using this as a weapon. Fear is an amazing weapon. And every level of government is using it right now to control our lives. And the people are getting fed up with it. Mm. Yeah, where where are you at on the vaccination? Um, are are you going to get it when it when it is offered to you, or are you going to wait a while? Uh, I'm going to wait a while. Look, I haven't had a flu shot. Look, all of a sudden nobody's dying from the flu. We have had a flu vaccine for 79 years, and on average, 50,000 people a year still die from the flu. We didn't wear masks since 1930, so now all of a sudden we all go wear masks, but get these flu shots, and we get these other shots, and then nobody nobody gets the flu anymore because COVID. I mean, it's it's the numbers are, are skewed. I know it's horrible. I don't dismiss the fact that this thing is very contagious, um, but I don't know. I mean, the FDA, as far as I've seen, hasn't hasn't approved this drug yet. And so I, I guess I'll do it when I absolutely have to do it. But right now, I'm just going to I'm going to wait and see more. Yeah, same, because, you know, we have 80 percent of our listeners are military and first responders. So obviously they hit us up all the time, paramedics and all that stuff. Sure. And they're, they're the first ones getting it right now. And all of them are like, man, the data just isn't there yet yeah. um, for us to, to take this. But military and first responders have been used for guinea pigs for stuff yeah. frequently. Like, uh, I mean, the, the uh, black community in a way worse way back in the day. But, uh, I mean, even recently, the swine flu vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, before anybody got it, they were trying to give it to us. And I'm like, no, not doing that. They're like, yeah, you got to. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you do. And I'm like, uh, no, I don't. And I just walked out. That was the end of it. They didn't say, I don't know if they just didn't want to deal with my bullshit or whatever. Yeah. But that was the end of it. I never heard about it again. Um, do you think they'll make it mandatory, Kevin? Uh, sure they will. Sure they will. You'll have, to, you'll have to do it to fly. You'll have to do it to go get groceries. you have to do it to walk out of your house. I don't know. It's, it's, I, I don't like it. I mean, from what I've read about, Fauci owns like 50% of this, the, the money that's going to come in from this. He's the guy pushing this thing. Um, I, it's... It, you know, Bill Gates not just bought two hundred fifty thousand acres of farmland. Why? You know, so it's just it's just weird to me. There's so many weird things going on right now. People better start waking up to uh, the reality of what how much they want to control over our lives right now. Yeah, we we discussed that farmland thing uh, a few weeks ago here on the show. I I don't know why. I can't yeah, figure do. out why. Yeah, well, he do. said, "Here's what he said." I'll, I'll give you his statement. He said, "I'm just trying to diversify more my portfolio and own more property." And land and things like that. Yeah, I'm sure that's what China's doing by buying up real estate all over America, too, right? Get yeah. fucked, Bill. Yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. That's, again... What he, do you think he's doing uh, with it? He wants to uh, control the ability to feed people. Because yeah. that's a commodity that will never, ever go away. That's what he wants. No shit. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I couldn't figure yeah, it out with those guys. We've been talking about overpopulation for years now. How we got to control the population. How we got to we weed it down, you know? So it's... Uh, I don't know. We're 1984. Welcome. You know, we're, we're living it right now. Yeah. Speaking of which, that, that book is uh, now a bestseller once again um, because of everything that's going on. I'm going to write a book called Fuck Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> and we can talk about how he's fucked over our public school systems a bunch of times. Yeah. Right. Oh, before. Yeah. Yeah. And we can talk about how uh, after he was uh, found guilty, his company found guilty of antitrust. They tried to. Uh, they wanted to donate a bunch of good. They said, oh, we're going to They just tried to do a thing where they donated a bunch of computers right to public high schools and shit all over the place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it came to light that he was just trying to uh, uh, get the government addicted to Microsoft. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like 
Of course, Bill Gates wants to make money. He's a businessman. Making money is what he does. He sees, uh, you, you can't think of him as some kind of super villain. He sees an opportunity to get his <clears throat> product, whatever that happens to be, in the most hands of consumers, right? Mm -hmm. And his product is whatever the hell he wants it to be at this point because he's a billionaire. So if he wants to go buy land and, and farm and sell food, you know, I mean, that's a reasonable thing to do, yeah, I right. guess. It's, it's, not, it's not intrinsically evil for him to do that. I mean, we'll see how he does it. Based on the way he's done things in the past, I would be very suspicious of this man's intentions, right? Yeah. Because hey, he's... guys. I hate to cut it short. I got another interview coming up here mm. in about uh, less than 10 minutes. So I got I to gotta oh. roll here and get ready for that one. No, for sure. Hey, we appreciate your yeah, time man. today, Kevin. Um, uh, oh, tell no, every... I love talking to you. Hey, KevinSorbo.net is a good place to go. Yep. Now, SorboFamilyFilmStudios.com. Sign up. Lot. Three new movies coming out this year. They're in the can. They're done. Sweet. Fantastic. And we're looking forward to Reagan. I know you were uh, talking about that last time. Mm -hmm. I'll be shooting mine in uh, probably in March or April, my role in it, yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. Kevin, thanks for stopping by, buddy. It's always a fucking pleasure, man. We love you. All right, guys. Have a good one. All right, take care. Thanks. Uh, Dan, one thing I wanted to, to chat with you about is um, uh, the Pitbull comments. We had talked about it last night during the Super Bowl party, which, uh, look, we were rocked mm -hmm. um, uh, for that. But people haven't really said that much about it today his comments on that podcast of whether or not uh uh the covid was created by somebody a couple years ago do you know more about that story by the way uh no not about that specifically but i've i did hear everything he had to say it's kind of weird right <clears throat> the weird thing is is like pitbull sounds relatively educated which i also didn't know either <laughs> no he doesn't look like a guy that would be educated he looks like a guy that would have chest hair and a gold chain and be hitting on your girlfriend right in front of you yeah you know what yeah. i mean he yeah. looks like that kind of guy but uh you know his his grandmother actually fought in the uh, cuban revolutionary war and fought against castro and all of his bullshit i mean and it, if somebody that grew up with someone like that is saying, hey, this looks a lot like what we were going through before. Maybe we should slow down and take a look. You, maybe we should slow down and take a look. That seems like a pretty reasonable thing to happen if somebody that's, uh, you know, been in a been in an accident before feels that coming on again. That is your instinct, mm -hmm. right? You're, that's 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 what keeps us alive as as human beings is our instinct and uh, uh, knowing warning signs when we see them. That's why we're afraid of spiders and snakes because so many of them are venomous. You know what I mean? Um, it makes sense. So I listen when he says stuff like that. Some of the other stuff he said is pretty goddamn crazy. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> is it? Yeah. And where's he getting this info? I don't know, man. I honestly don't know. Uh, it's one of those things where I was like, huh? That This is the guy? He also recently uh, bought a NASCAR team. Did he really? Yeah, track house racing. I don't know whose cars those are, but that's pretty fucking funny. Hi, Bob. How much is Pitbull worth? $100 million. Is he really? Yeah. Should I end my life on the air <clears throat> right now then? Or, or Let's just go rob is it Pitbull. That? Maybe Pitbull wants to buy uh, our company. Yeah, $100 million. My God, man. What are we doing? We're doing, we're doing it all wrong here. You think Pitbull he, should have more money he, than $100,000? He might. I can't hear you, by the way. That's fine. I can hear you through the thing, but... Uh, Yeah. Speaking of that, Marcelo Zuna, four years, sixty-four million. That's a huge deal for the Braves. That's very cheap for that man's services for the next six or four years. I'm amped about that. They got him and Acuna and uh, all these all locked up on long-term deals. Now they just got to sign Freeman. I'm sure that deal came in low because they're going to re-sign Freeman after next year. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. This year, whatever. <clears throat> Soroka is going to get. Uh, well, I mean, he came off an injury season, so his arbitration's not going to look as good as it would have otherwise, but he's going to get paid. I, I assume they're going to try to sign him to a long-term deal this year sometime. Not yeah. that this isn't really a sports show. Nah, but. nah, but it, it doesn't matter. We're, we're having fun here today. We got uh, absolutely rocked last night for the Super Bowl. Um, we appreciate everybody joining us on Drinking Bro Sports. Uh, we have a new YouTube channel for that. Um, had over 10,000-plus uh, live viewers last night for that. Uh, that was a fun time indeed. Um, man, uh, trying to put the pieces back together today. I forgot that I was wearing a box on my head last night. Mm, yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for a little bit. I had a 
I had a nice box in my head, and, uh, and it was a magical evening. Uh, speaking of which, we had a bunch of people fly in uh, for the show mm-hmm. yesterday. And, um, you know, uh, if you wouldn't mind, Dan, uh, if I could bring on Mr. Bill Schofield, I'd like to give him uh, the drinking bro of the week here. Uh, come on in, Bill. Just don't touch my beef jerky. It's uh, Anthem. It's beef an a- jerky. <laughs> I'm serious. Don't, if you touch it, Is that the you. jam, by the way? It's really fucking good, yes. Who makes that? Uh, Anthem. I- I've never heard of the company, actually. It's a uh, small, veteran-owned company. Is it really? Out in uh, Wyoming, Sheridan, Wyoming. Ah, uh, shit. Near where Burt lives, actually. No, okay. No sugar in this. No shit. No shit. No sugar. There it's really we go. good. There we go. Uh, don't touch it. Don't touch it, Bill. Don't, don't touch it. Uh, pop on on, Bill. Pop on on the show. We appreciate you flying out, man. Um, keep that mic maybe eh, an inch from your face. There you go. There you go. You were uh, an emergency judge uh, last night in the uh, cooking competition. Um, where'd you fly in from? Uh, Des Moines, Iowa. How long have you been listening to Drinking Bros? Um, I actually thought about that on the way down here. I think the first episode I listened to was episode seven. So, so oh, really? Yeah. Old yeah. school. Old school, yeah. Yeah. I, D- Dan's off camera saying Iowa doesn't exist. Um, put that, uh, bring the mic just oh. to ta- down a little bit. Uh, there you go. Um, oh, he's good? Good. Look yeah, at that. Cool. We're, we're on it today. Um, thanks for, for coming down, man. We, we greatly appreciate it. You stepped in. Um, you helped uh, uh, predict, uh, not predict, but you, you gave the winner away to the yeah, proper yeah. person. Oh, yeah. Jesse was a clear winner in that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eric's crab dip was a bit too crabby. <laughs> and going with the melted cheddar on top was a bad decision. You well, couldn't, couldn't even get through it with the chips. So. It always is. Yeah. It always is. Um, who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to, Bill? Um, honestly, Ross, I think I'm going to give it to you, man. Thanks really? for having me down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, I've been listening forever. Um, you know, you guys give a ton of entertainment for free to obviously a shit ton of people. Yeah. You know, uh, it's a highlight of a lot of people's day. So thanks for doing it. Thanks for having me down. You know, thanks for being so welcoming. Um, the studio is great. Had a fun time last night. So it's definitely worth the trip. What time did you get out of here last night? Uh, I forgot what time we left, but like uh, Tansy and his boys and Brooke over there. Yep. And Dan, we all went downtown, and I think I got back to my Airbnb at like 5 a.m. 5, 5 a.m. last night. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was an interesting night, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it always is, man. Yeah. It rough, always is. Rough morning. I had to... Yeah. Were you expecting all of this shit in here when you came in, by the way? Um, is it, is it, is it, I'm always curious what people think when they roll in, because they're like, oh, my God, it was, I'm surprised it's this, it's this professional. Um, no, I mean, it met my expectations, for sure. Um. It's really interesting to see all the sets in one room. Yeah. You know, I, I knew like it was probably set up like this, but mm-hmm. actually coming in and seeing it, it's really interesting how you guys have it set up in here and it's awesome. Yeah, we awesome. try we try to do our best. Yeah. We try to great. do our best. Um, and, and we're grateful for, for you listening and, and people coming in. Uh, speaking of which, Brooke, you're uh, you're are you out of here today? Yeah. Yeah. Come on in. Come on in, Brooke. Uh, we'll let you give a drinking bro of the week, dude. The people love you. Come on in, Brookers. Come on in. There hasn't been one time that I haven't seen you in LSU gear, by the way. Yes, you have. That's not true. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yes, yes. You, you're always it's swagged all out. Yeah, it's, it's all, all you. That's, yeah. I think that's all you own. I mean, I have a few nice little dresses and summer dresses, but generally it's, uh, it's LSU stuff. Yeah, never yeah. seen them. Yeah. Never seen them. Because I never wear them. <laughs> Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Drinking bro at? You've been listening forever, and you're always on the message boards. Everybody loves you. You're like a fucking fan favorite on there. Aww, but you've never, you've never said, hey, man, uh, who's the drinking bro of the week? Who would you like to give it to? Jesse. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Got to give it to Jesse. You have to. Yes, of course. Uh, she puts up with all this bullshit. She does. God bless her. <laughs> I don't know how she does it day in and day out. <laughs> how crazy was it behind the scenes last night? Were people doing shots and shit? Like I'm on because we're on, so I don't really get to see it. Like right past what I'm looking at. But yeah. uh, how, how wild did shit get last night? I mean, I just remember Clay, and that was just that's it. Dude, that guy had like fucking fifty beers last night. I would say more than that. It, it's insane. I I counted twelve. No lie. Because that, that's a huge glass he was drinking out of held four beers. Four, yeah. And uh, I saw him drink three of them. 
So, I mean, that was a, a 12 And he already right came there. in here fucked up. Oh, yeah. He was fucking rocked mm -hmm. last yeah. night. Um, yeah. How late did Clay stay? I have no idea. Man. I can't remember. Wild night last night. Mm. Um, Fun we, stuff. We appreciate you coming down, though. Of course. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, we had a we had a great time last night. It's always fun here. It's always a blast. Yeah. Um, what do you think of Austin, Texas? I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's great, right? It's my new New Orleans. Yeah. Because I can't travel to New Orleans. Can't do shit anymore. Mm -mm. Sucks, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Every time, man, you, you want to go out and do something fun where you're like, shit, like we were talking about going to the Final Four this year. I just want there to be fans. I just want to show up. I just want to drink and go to fucking events again and not wear a goddamn mask. Right. Like yeah. we were talking about with Kevin Sorbo. Like, mm -hmm. when is that going to happen? Never. I, I don't think so either. Masks forever. You think so? I, mean, I hope not. I really hope not either, but I feel like I feel like it will. I'm to the point where, because you're a, a diehard college football fan as well, and like, mm -hmm. I'm to the point where I'm like, man, if you want me to take this stupid fucking vaccination just to go to a goddamn Buckeyes game, like, fine, I'll do it. Yes. I'm, oh, Give it I'm, to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I when, we, when we were talking to Sorba earlier about the, the vaccinations and all that shit, and I was like, man, the data is not there and all that shit. I'm, I'm to the point now where it's like, hey, man, if I could sit in a packed stadium mm -hmm. with all my friends and party again. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking you shoot me with, with that, whatever. Whatever. Fucking anthrax at this yeah. point. I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, I think Dan is uh, going to Joe Rogan and Chappelle tonight. Oh, nice. Well, the thing is, they're doing swabs at the door. So... They, you just sit there for like hours. You have to get there early. You have and to show up two hours early, and then they put you in like a trough, right? With like uh, no lie, when you go in, it's like a, there's a huge tent, um, and there's like metal, kind of like fencing, like like you're a fucking cattle, like right. you're a, sh a sheep. And then they put you in there with four to eight people. Um, they put the swab up your nose, and then they wait 15 minutes. The nurses go and test it, right? And then they come back and they're like, "Hey, group eight, congratulations! You don't have COVID. You passed the test." Yeah, and you're like, oh, sweet, thanks, man. I already knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, earlier, you know, people would kill to go to that show, and Dan's like, man, I don't think I'm fucking doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be curious to see if he goes tonight. Um, so, yeah, it's Bill's, Bill's off camera saying, dude, give me the fucking Chappelle and, <laughs> and Rogan tickets. Because uh, they're up to, like, 350 a pop now, so. Oh, my gosh. I know, well, it's crazy. That is crazy. It's crazy. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But uh, either way, um, we greatly appreciate you coming out. Absolutely. Thanks uh, for having me. Bill, man, we, we greatly appreciate you flying out. And it's all the other people that flew out uh, for the live show last night for the Super Bowl. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Um, we're going to start doing more things like this because it's a blast. Uh, and then it's cheap, you know, because you're, you're not asking people to buy $10,000 Super Bowl tickets. And everybody can come and rage and, uh, and have a bunch of great food. Uh, shout out to all our sponsors last night, um, Twisted X Brewery, um, for, uh, for giving us endless cases of beer. Uh, you're drinking, people are still drinking today. I get it, man. I got to get back on this horse as well. This is the only way out of this shit. Uh, who was that pizza place, Bob? They were fantastic. Doughboy. Doughboy. Holy shit. Uh, that was the jam last night, man. Yeah. I hadn't found, like, a good Austin pizza place. Doughboys was shit. They're good. The only one that I really like is Via 313, but you have to be in the mood for Detroit-style pizza. So in terms of, like, normal pizza, not, yeah. a lot, not a lot of good ones, but Doughboys is legit. Yeah, Doughboys is legit. So shout-out to Doughboys for all the pizzas last night. And, again, Twisted X Brewery. Uh, they made the McConaughey's uh, beer that uh, we were drinking with Matthew McConaughey when he was on the show. Um, that's just a local brewery next to my house. Um, uh, buddies with the owner and, uh, and they're rad. Our dream would be to open up a brewery and then just put the studio inside of there. You um, should like glass. Yeah. Uh, we're working on it now. Fuck man. Real estate in, in, uh, Austin is crazy expensive. Well, I just bought a house. So another house. Oh, you and, did? Yeah. Where at? In the neighborhood. <laughs> really? <laughs> I needed a three car garage. Two would not suffice. No, no, because you've got the <laughs> you've got a golf cart that is all decked out in LSU. Yeah, yeah, and my suburban, so I, I needed more room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where did yeah. you move at? Did, like the other end of the neighborhood? Nicholas Creek. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, now everybody knows my street name. Good job, bro. You're fine. You're I, look, really killing it today. The government can find <laughs> all of us. Everybody always finds all of us. Uh, thank you for being here, uh, Bill. Thanks again, buddy, and uh, to everybody watching on Drinking Bros Sports last night's. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I, we had 10,000 plus last night awesome. watching, and uh, Giorgio and I were the only ones that picked uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So. Uh, I actually did as well. Did you really? 
Yes. Oh. Yeah. Look at you. Just right off the cuffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're gonna have to do a suicide watch on Xander. Find out where he Bless is him. today. I think he had ten thousand dollars on that game. Ugh. Um, did you get a total? It's not more. Out? It was more. I mean, he was acting like it was more. I know. <laughs> You ever see those guys who were just flipping out at like Super Bowl parties and you're like, oh, you, you put your mortgage on this. Yeah, it's like, oh, 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 you really thought this was a lock, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. It felt like, yeah, I, I thought it was 10, but it, it could have been more, man. It felt like a lot of money. I had a box on my head last night. Uh, fun times indeed. Uh, we appreciate you being here with us. Uh, go to iTunes and rate the show a five star and leave a quick review. It is not the millions of listeners that listen to this thing. It's, it's only the fucking reviews that move us up the charts on iTunes. And uh, we might be working with another app soon, uh, potentially, hopefully, radio. We're supposed to get the answer on that uh, by the end of the week. Um, and, uh, and doing some exclusive stuff with them, which would be rad. Because uh, you never know where this is going to shift or when they're going to cut you off. Like we were talking about Sorbo earlier. Um, we did start a Rumble account on Rumble.com, and we've moved all of our back catalog over there as well. Uh, so feel free, to, feel free to subscribe to there as well, because just in case all this shit goes away, uh, we want to have backup plans in place. Uh, thanks for being here with us. Uh, for Brooke today, uh, D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, who's uh, in the other room getting ready for Chappelle. I'm Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.